Hi folks, Mr. Ackman here. Thanks for watching. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the shapes of position, velocity, and acceleration time graphs. We're going to do a demo, which you can find in your course pack, and the way it works is this. I'm going to show you a setup of a cart on a track with a motion sensor, and I'm going to describe a few different ways that we're going to move the cart. You're going to predict the shapes of the three different kinds of graphs, and then we're going to watch what the motion sensor gives us. And then you're going to get to test whether your understanding of the graphs that are produced by certain kinds of motion is accurate or you need some extra practice. Let's take a look at the assignment page. Okay, so here we are in the course pack. You can see the assignment is called Demo, Motion Sensor, and DTVTAT Graphs. The picture gives you an idea of what our setup is going to look like. It's very similar to this. We've got a track like this. We've got a low friction but not zero friction cart. We've got a motion sensor at one end which is hooked up to the computer and can generate those graphs and we can raise or lower either end of the track. Now just a note on the motion sensor. Uh, the way it works is it sends out sound waves, ultrasonic sound waves, which bounce off the cart and come back. Since we know the speed or the computer knows the speed of sound and can measure the time, it can locate the position of the cart several times per second. We're going to use a sample rate of about 50 hertz. So 50 times every second, the computer will know where the cart is. And therefore, if the cart moves from one sample to the next, it'll say, oh, it moved. Well, how much? And then it'll say, well, how long did that take? And then it'll know how fast it's going. And then if it figures out the changes in the speed from sample to sample, it'll also know the acceleration and it'll create those graphs. Another thing you need to know about the motion sensor is when you get too close to it, right around here, maybe about 10 centimeters away, it has a blind spot. I guess the sound waves are just returning too quickly for the computer to calculate the position. So if the cart is ever moving in that area, the graph doesn't get created. The motion sensor doesn't pick that up. So keep that in mind in case in the video you see the cart in that region. You'll know why the ultimate result turns out the way it did. So uh, there's three trials that we're going to do, number one, two, and three. In number one, the track's going to be horizontal, and so it's not going to look exactly like this. I'm going to start with the cart right about here, and I'm going to give it a push away from the motion sensor. Another thing you need to know about the motion sensor, when you move away from it, that's the positive direction for all of the position, velocity, and acceleration vectors. And if you move toward it, that's the negative direction as far as the vectors are concerned. So like I said, we're going to start over here by this check mark. We're going to move away with a push. The track is going to be flat. Friction is low. And therefore, you decide what the three graphs will look like. In trial number two, Things are going to look just like you see in this picture. The card is going to begin over here by the check mark at rest. I'm going to release it and let it roll down the hill. And then I'm going to stop the motion before it crashes to the end. Finally, in trial number three, tri the track is going to look exactly like this, except the cart is going to begin over here by this check mark. And I'm going to push it uphill. I'm going to push it with just enough force so that it approaches but does not hit the motion sensor, stop somewhere around here before it gets to the blind spot and then starts rolling back down the hill. So now that I've described in words what you're gonna see, let's take a look at the videos of what the motion looks like, and then you can make your predictions.
Okay, guys, so let's just do a quick wrap up here to make sure you understand everything. You've seen now the uh, results of the experiment or the demo, and you've had a chance to check your understanding of the graphs. Hopefully you had some success. If not, this last part here will help you. In the first trial with the horizontal track, I think most of you would have got this, we have steady motion at a steady pace. The position increases steadily with time, so we have a rising straight line. Remember, we didn't begin at the origin because of that blind spot with the motion sensor, so your graph should begin somewhere above the origin. The velocity was steady, so it has a certain value that doesn't change. It should be a horizontal line, and it's going away from the motion sensor, which is the positive direction, so it should be a horizontal line above the time axis. You'll notice in the results here, the, the line actually has a slight negative slope, and that, of course, is because there is friction and the speed in reality is declining, which means there's a negative acceleration. It should be a fairly steady amount based on air resistance and rolling resistance and all that. So you get a roughly steady line just a bit below the time axis, although in, real, in an ideal sense in your graph, you probably would have drawn it on the horizontal axis, on the time axis. You notice it's a little wobbly. The Any little change, any wobbling, um, change in the air resistance, whatever, uh, the resistance in the way the wheels rotate as they go in a full circle could affect that. So the acceleration tends to be wobbly when you measure it. Uh, in trial number two, we're now speeding up going down the plane. So we have a curve like this on our position graph. We're covering more and more distance each second. So it curves up like that. Again, it does not start at the origin. The velocity increases at a steady pace, however, because the pull of gravity is steady on the cart. Again, the velocity does not begin at zero because while I started the cart near the uh, motion sensor and released it, it wasn't until it moved a little bit that the motion sensor began to detect the velocity and therefore the first readings would be above zero. Although if you put it at zero, that's fine. Uh, the acceleration again, like I said, is a steady value, which this time is positive. So we should have a roughly steady line, horizontal, somewhere above the time axis like this. The part in the beginning here is just probably something left over from me pushing the cart, uh, sorry, um, moving my releasing the cart and getting my hand out of the way. Sometimes that reflects some of the sound waves and affects the results. Uh, trial number three is perhaps the trickiest one. And uh, what I'd like to do is start down here with the acceleration. Notice how the acceleration is pretty much the same as in the previous trial, and that's because it's the same angle of inclination, it's the same gravity force, and the same amount of friction resulting in the same acceleration. So this you can start with very simply by just copying essentially what you had here. I like to begin questions or solutions with things that I know that are for sure true. So I would begin there. Now the next part, let's go to velocity. In the beginning, I pushed the cart uphill, so it was moving in the negative direction. So I've got negative velocities here, negative values. But it's slowing down, so the velocities are becoming smaller and smaller numbers, even though they're negative. That's why we're creeping up here towards zero. We finally reach the top of the cart, uh, the top of the track where we stop, and then that's going to give us a zero velocity. Now we speed up, so velocities are getting bigger and bigger, more and more positive, and we're moving in the positive direction. So we're doing that at a steady rate, so we get a straight line going like this. People often get this graph wrong. Uh, that leaves us with the position graph here. Uh, we're starting far from the motion sensor. We are approaching it, so we're getting closer and closer to the origin, which you can see here. And then we're stopping, so the tangent, if we draw that, remember the tangent to a position graph gives you the instantaneous velocity. That is a horizontal tangent, a zero slope, so a zero velocity. And then we begin speeding up, and this part looks a lot like this part here. All right, that was a lot to digest if you had any trouble. So watch, rewind the video and pay more attention. Try it again. If you're still stuck, you know where to find me. Send me a message or talk to me in class. I hope that made sense and helped. Bye for now, and I will see you in class. Thanks for watching.